Hey guys, this is Jody Sheehan here with Affiliate Rag. Got Tom Gaddis here of uh, Offline Sharks. Say hello, Tom. <laughs> Aloha, everybody. <clears throat> I'm excited Tom, to be here. Thanks for... I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, I was going to say thanks for having me, man. I'm excited to talk to you. Yep, so so Tom is a... Uh, if you've never heard of him, a lot of you probably have, but Tom actually had an article in Forbes not too long ago. Um, you want to say something about that, Tom? Yeah, I did. I actually, we had an article published, um, or I had an article published through Offline Charts on uh, building a team, right? like having outsourcers come in. Uh, it was pre- pretty exciting, uh, you know, looking back on kind of where I came from and how this whole thing started, like to have something published in Forbes and, you know, to actually be, I don't know, just, it was just, it was really an exciting an exciting thing to do, you know, it was, it was, it was fun. So how did that work? Did you like <clears throat> keep sending articles in and they finally published one or, or did they actually, did you have some connection there? Or? No. So actually they, they have a, a program that you can join. That's uh, the, the business development council, right? They actually have several different ones for all different kinds of businesses. And, so what happens is uh, they're an invitation type thing. So usually you have to be recommended or invited by Forbes. There's, you know, some vetting processes and certain requirements to even be invited first, right? And then once you're a member of those councils, uh, one of the things that you can do is, um, you know, submit topics and see if they would be interested in having articles written and getting them put, put together for yourself. So, that's, that's what I did. So I just went through that process. So, you know, they lay out topics that they would like to have articles on, and then you write them and submit them in, and if they get approved, then they, they publish them. So. Yep. Yeah, that's really cool. So uh, <clears throat> you started out, how long ago did you start? It's been in, on the and internet. Well, gosh, on the internet, it was probably – like 1999, maybe 1998, I I was actually living in Michigan, and I got a job as, uh, like, a personal assistant for a writer that lived there. And so one of the things that I had to do was to uh, start learning about how we could market some things online. And, and so that kind of is what got me into the whole, in, the Internet as a selling vehicle and and having products online and things like that um so you know i it was just really kind of a a side little thing that i was interested in right learning about seo and all those things actually it's really funny um because i know in your article you mentioned uh johan mock yep and so probably around this time like 1999 2000 somewhere around there uh, Joe Vitale was having a seminar in Austin, Texas, and uh, he had this contest where you could, it was like a copywriting contest, you would submit a sales page, and he picked some winners, and you got a, a free ticket to the event, and so I actually wrote the sales page, and I was a winner of that, one of the winners of that event, and one of the speakers was Johan Mock. And it turns out we both have similar interests where I used to actually be a professional magician and uh-huh. Johan is interest. He's interested in magic too. And so we really hit it off when we were hanging out, you know, and, um, and, uh, we've not really kept in good touch over the years, but just, you know, just kind of here and there, but I really didn't do anything with the online stuff. Right. So I was still learning how to do it. Um, I ended up moving back to Oklahoma. I was working in the restaurant business as a corporate restaurant manager, and I wanted to get something going on the side. So my first thing was to do affiliate marketing. So I I, I built this little site up that was all about uh, how to do surveys online, right? Like, And it gave links where people could go and do these surveys and get paid. And uh so I, you know, I did all the, you know, all the domain research. Um, I did all the, you know, all the keyword research, all that stuff. Built this little site, put some affiliate offers on there, and uh, it ended up doing like it was bringing in about a hundred dollars a month. 
but I couldn't really figure out how to scale it. And I was super busy with work and had a family and I wasn't very, uh, I wasn't very like, I used to like to tell people I was entrepreneurial, but I wasn't, uh, I wasn't at that point where I was like getting stuff done. Like it was really just something I like to say. Right. Right. Like <laughs> it was an aspirational um, goal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was an aspirational goal. I wasn't really like, you know, I wasn't really, you know, putting in the effort that, that it requires. And so it was just kind of lingering out there, you know, this, this affiliate site. And, uh, and then somebody mentioned to me like, Hey, you know, you've, you learned all this stuff. Like you, you know how to do SEO, you know how to do these websites. Like, you know, you could always help local businesses. Like they need help with that stuff. Like you could use your skills to make some money. And I thought, Hmm, that sounds interesting. So, it turns out I was pretty good at getting clients. And so I started, you know, started getting, working with a couple of clients here and there, helping them with their online marketing, still really not putting in the effort, you know, that, that it takes to build a real business and ended up, um, I ended up getting married and had a couple of kids and my wife had lived in Hawaii before. And so she, her mom actually moved back to Maui and she went and helped her mom move. And when she came back to Oklahoma, she was like, you would love Hawaii. You'd love Maui. And, uh, I said, well, you know, the kids, they have like a year before they start school. If we want to move there, let's just move there. If we don't like it, we can come back. And I really wanted to get out of the restaurant business. Right. So (laughs) that was the plan. I'm not, I'm going to leave the restaurant business. (laughs) Yeah. We're going to move to Maui. And, uh, yeah, but like the next day after we made that decision, my wife is like, Hey, this restaurant on Maui, so it was a pretty big company, the Bubba Gump Shrimp Company. They're mm-hmm. looking for a manager, it turns out. So I went through this whole, you know, phone interview process and I ended up getting a job there. And, uh, so we hit Maui and then eight months after we're here, I got fired and I was like, Oof, what am I going to do? Wow. You know, and, yeah, so and what it's not ended like up happening... The, it's not like you're in the cheapest place to live to get fired either. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's expensive to live here. And so I'm going, oh, what are we going to do? So my uh, my wife actually got a job to bring some cash flow in so I could start a business. And I actually fell back on what was the easiest thing to do, which was just to get clients and help them with their online marketing. And... One of the things I would say, I know there's, uh, I know a lot of people listening to this probably do, you know, are looking to do strictly online affiliate type marketing. But I think, you know, if, if you are really want to get a business going and, and you're struggling to get an affiliate thing off the ground, I think one of the best things you can do is just pick up a couple of clients and use that cash flow to fund your business. You know, there's, Nothing that says you have to build a full blown agency, but you could pick up a client or two here and there, you know, one a month, whatever, um, and that can give you the cash flow to really do what you want to do. So, yeah, so when you're I talking did, about clients, you're talking about like getting a like a bricks and mortar type business or somebody offline to help them online, not not like marketing to somebody online and picking somebody up online. You mean like yeah? I mean, somebody... well, you could. You could do, I mean, you don't necessarily, they don't necessarily have to be a brick and mortar business. I think it's easier if they are, you know, but yeah, the, what I'm talking about is a business that's not, you know, that's not doing things like email marketing, that doesn't have any idea how to, you know, set up social media, um, that, that just has no clue about what it takes to market their business online, right? And being able to go to those types of people and say, Hey, I know how to do that. I can help you do it. Uh, They're looking for help, right? And so that's what I started doing. And I I actually built up a a six figure agency here. And then along along the way, while I was doing that, I was thinking, well, how how, you know what other things can I do? How can I expand this even further? And turns out there's a bunch of people that would like to learn how to build an agency and get clients. And so I thought, well, I have a market and I a market that wants something that I know how to do. Like I've had a little bit of success with this thing that they want to learn how to do. 
And so I put together an information product showing uh, one of the things that I use to start start my agency. And uh, that was my first product, and it, it took off. It sold like 2,000 copies on Warrior Plus right out of the gate. It was uh, pretty amazing. And, wow. yeah, and That's so that, <laughs> that was, yeah, so that was how I got started, right? So in the meantime, I had met another uh, guy here on Maui who was doing what he was building an agency too, getting website clients doing that kind of thing. And one day he was at my house and uh, I was like, man, I just sent this email this morning and I made like 500 bucks. <laughs> and he was like, what? He's like, what are you talking about? I was like, I sent this email and I made like 500 bucks. And he's like, get out of here. How'd yeah. you do that? <laughs> and so I told him about the product and the thing with, you know, putting products and things together in today's day and age, it takes, there's a lot that goes into it. And I knew I could use some help. So anyway, we partnered up. His name is Nick Ponty, and uh, he's my business partner in Offline Sharks. And so that was a, that was a little, about a little over three years ago. Well, 2016, so it hasn't been quite four years yet, but we started with, with nothing, right? We had no, you know, no, uh, we always say we were on less than a shoestring budget. And, uh, we had, you know, we had our agencies that we were using, but that was really just paying for, you know, to live here. It wasn't really bringing in, you know, we were doing six figures, yes, but on Maui, that's not very much. Right. And, um, <laughs> so anyway, so yeah, we launched the, we, we started off on charts, started putting on more product. And, uh, you know, now we do, um, well, last year we did over a million dollars just off the product side of things. That doesn't count any clients, agencies, anything like that. And, you know, we're hoping to double that this year and we just continue to grow. You know, now there's, now we have a, now we have like a, an actual team, you know, we have like nine people. We've got, you know, uh, content writers, we've got social media people, we've got, you know, for support people, we have developers, we have all these things that we've been able to put in place as we grow to continue to scale. Um, and yeah, and now, you know, the affiliate side of things is, uh, you know, it's a big part of our business. We run webinars, do all that kind of stuff. Yep. How long ago did you put your first product on Warrior Plus? That product came out in probably, let's see. It had to be 2016, maybe 2016, 2015, but probably 2000. I mean, it was like literally not very long after I did that, that, that Nick and I started working with offline sharks. Right. So you're talking roughly about four years ago. You yeah. Had, it was, just, it was just you and Nick. Yep. Doing everything. Yep. Like and, I was, and I was got this right. Whole, the, whole yeah. Big group of people. Yeah, I was like, put, I was putting the courses together, recording the videos. He was doing the back end technical stuff. I was writing the copy. Um, you know, it was, uh, we were man in the Facebook groups every day, answering all the support emails. <laughs> and, uh, we did that for, we did that for a long time, it seemed like. Yep. And then we were like, <laughs> I'm oh, sure man. it seemed like a really long time at the time. <laughs> <laughs> It did. Well, and you, you know, but you start to, like, as the, as things started to grow, it just got to be too much. Like, we weren't able to continue to create. We knew, like, we need to create products. We need to be able to do that stuff to really grow. And so we had to bring people in to help us so we could free up our time. Because, I mean, we, we literally could spend all day just answering support, you know. And we, you know, and we were starting to bring into doing some software. And, like, there was just lots of... uh things happening so that's that's awesome so you <clears throat> you've got a team of like what eight eight to twelve people it sounded like yeah around that so we have an you know there's myself and nick and then we have an operations manager who kind of you know handles the team and all that stuff we've got an hr person we've we've got you know and then various people so support people i mean we have a lot you know a lot of support people and developers and and things like that we work with so yep so that's just a little bonus for everybody listening that you know four years ago it was it was two of you guys and, and <laughs> yeah and just in that amount of time that's you know 
a good business model and some good products, that's that's how fast you can grow with this type of stuff. So I just think yeah, that's good, yeah. to, point out, I mean, good to point out. <laughs> yeah, it is pretty amazing when you look at it and go, wow. I mean, you can really grow super quick in this business. And a lot of times you just don't even expect it. Like you don't even know it's getting ready to happen. And then the next thing you know, you're like, holy cow. Yep, busy. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So so you're familiar with, with Matt Basak. I was listening to <clears throat> one of his interviews not too long ago. And, and he was talking about how he had, he used to sell all these uh, Kiyos, Kiyosaki products. Um, and that's how he got started online. And this was back in the early 2000s. Um, and he said he had a whole closet full of stuff and nobody to sell it to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and, and yeah. he was talking to, he had a thing back then called the Millionaire Minutes where he would interview millionaires. And he was talking to one of them and one of them basically explained to him that, you know, you've, you've got to create and control markets if you want to be wealthy, if you want to make a living, sell products. And so he, <clears throat> he said that was kind of his aha moment that, I've got all these products, but nobody to sell them to. If I had a list of people that wanted the products, I could pick any product I want and sell it to them, and I would know what they want, you know, <clears throat> within reason, and 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 they would buy it. And that's when he, he his claim to fame on that one, I guess, is he came up with the uh, the opt-in form, <laughs> which right. you know, which everybody yeah. in the world uses now. So that yeah, was his well, aha moment, and he said once he started that. He started an email list and with he had he was flat broke, didn't know how he was gonna make ends meet. Um, had an apartment, little apartment with a closet full of products, and and a year later he had made his first million. <laughs> yeah, I mean it, it's great. and that model of you know the the writer that I worked for up in Michigan who has really been kind of a big mentor for me. That was one of the things he used to hammer home to me is like it all starts with the market like find a market figure out what their problem is and then make a solution to their problem yep you know and uh and that's the that's the path to success and and i think the other you know the other thing that's very true in today's day and age is it's never too early to start building an audience like even if you don't have anything to sell and this is, I, I think, what Matt was getting at with what you were just talking about is like, even if you don't have anything to sell, if you can start building an audience, you'll be able to find things to sell. There's no shortage of things to sell, but there are a big shortage of people that have an audience. You know? Exactly. One, uh, one thing that one thing that I kind of skipped over in that little story of how I got into all this was before I put that product out on Warrior Plus. I actually, uh, I had released it before that, but in a, like in a high dollar version. And what I, what I did was I created a Facebook group and I told people like, Hey, I'm creating this Facebook group. I, forget, I think it was called Entrepreneur Empire. It's not around anymore, but I made this Facebook group and, uh, I got like 50 people in there. And as soon as I had 50 people in there and I did that just by like putting it in my Facebook, personal Facebook feed and saying, Hey, I'm starting this Facebook group. If anybody's interested in entrepreneurship and business building, come join. And somehow I ended up with 50 people. <laughs> and as soon as I got 50 people in there, I made a post in there and was like, Hey, I'm going to do this training on how I do this direct mail thing that I do here in the area to get clients. And, uh, it's $150. And I got three people to buy that thing. Yeah. There you go. And, and so then I went and I did the training, right? So I didn't even have to create a product. Like I, I, I just had an outline. So I like, I'm going to do this training and you're going to get this stuff. And then I did the training and the training that I did live became the product. And so now I had this thing to sell, but then I decided to do it on Warrior Plus. So I broke out, you know, the video, the training and broke it up into modules and made an actual course out of it. But mm -hmm. I mean, anybody could do something like that, right? Just pick a, a topic, a hobby, a skill, something you're interested in and build a Facebook group around it and start building up building up an audience. And people, you already have some kind of, you already have a level of uh, just sort of like when you create a Facebook group, people just kind of give you this sort of little level of expertise because you created the group, even though you didn't do anything but create the group. 
right? right? Like, right. They look at you just like a little like, oh, that's the guy that created the group, you know? Yeah, he must know something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Really <clears throat> yeah, and I think you you touched on, I, and I guess it was your writer friend um, kind of taught it to you, but <clears throat> you find the people <clears throat> that you want to find and figure out what their problem is and you solve it for them. And, and I think that's a big part that a lot of people in affiliate marketing tend to miss is that they just go find a product and just go try to sell it to whoever's on their list. And, and I think yeah, that's no. a big, big mistake when people do that because not only could you be turning off your list and they're get, they feel like they're just getting spammed from you, so they'll end up either reporting you for spam, which is a really bad thing, or, or they'll just you know unsubscribe from your list and you've lost them forever. Where if you actually have a problem that you know they already have because you've done your proper research on defining who your perfect customer is, then at that point, you find that right product and connect that with the right customer, and there's your business model. It's, it's really not a whole lot. I mean, there's more to it than that, but that's the basic principle. Um, would you agree with that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you just followed that little model, you would do... Well, for a lot of people, they tend to overthink all that stuff because they think, well, it can't be that simple, right? And then, like, once they do something that works, like, I know we've really had to fight against, like, the types of – because sometimes, you you know, we put out a lot of products that are around in clients because that's the the pain point of our market, right? And – but sometimes you think, ugh. You shouldn't put out another thing on getting clients. Like, yeah, you know, like let's do something different. And it's like, nope. It's the it's if if it's a pain problem to your market, then you should be putting out products around it. Now, I'm not saying you you don't you know all of our products attack that pain point and from a different angle, right? But they're all around that pain point. So, you know, we give them multiple ways to help them solve that pain point but yeah yeah, and i think with the just with affiliate marketing in general like i found you know creating my own product and putting those out building the list that way what has really been super effective for us yeah and and when you put that like you said that first product i guess that was the, the the facebook thing you did became your first product you said Oh no! It's called uh, it was called coupon cash system okay. or coupon cash mailer, coupon cash mailer. Yeah. So when you built your first product, did you feel like you were the top of the line expert and knew absolutely everything about what you were putting out? Or because <laughs> I think that's where no. some people get scared to do stuff like that, and they feel like I'm I'm not the world's leading expert in this. Somebody's going to call me out on it, but it doesn't really matter, you know. Well, not only did I not. <laughs> Not only did I not feel that way, but the like the the thing I put the product out about wasn't even my idea. Mm-hmm. Like I, it wasn't an original idea of mine. It wasn't something I developed from scratch. It was something I learned from someone else. And what my product did though was showed, like because I actually took their idea and did it. Like I had all this, I had all this stuff that I could share because I actually took action and did the thing they were talking about. Right. So like I had to create, there was all kinds of things I had to create in that business for that product. And so I was able to, those, all those things were unique to me. So the idea wasn't original, but all the things I was talking about were right. And it's interesting because, you know, one of the things that I would suggest if you're, you know, if you're trying to break into this, you don't have any products or what or whatever it is. Is you know, when you consume products from other people, uh, if you have questions, email them, ask them questions, but more importantly, take action on what they're trying to show you, and then let them know the results you're getting, or or ask help from them. Because when I put out, like when I was going to put out that coupon cash system, one, I was really worried because I thought this isn't my idea. So I contacted the guy who I learned it from and I had actually talked to him a few times because he had given me help on how to really make it work. And I was like, Hey, I'm thinking about putting this out as a product. Like, what do you think of that? And I expected him to be like, don't do it. 
you know, <laughs> and shoot me down. And he was like, I think that's great. When are you going to put it out? And I told him, and then he became my number one affiliate. Wow. <laughs> because it was perfectly in line with his list. Right. right? And then there was another, another guy, uh, Bruce New Media, who I, I used to buy a lot of his products and I would uh, email Bruce questions and help again because I was taking action on his stuff. Like at the time I was doing all this, I had no intention of selling products. I was just trying to make these things work, right? And he ended up becoming another one of my really big affiliates because I had I had a relationship with him already. So when I went to put something out and I was like, "Hey, I'm releasing this product. Will you email for it?" He was like, "Absolutely, man. I said, That's great." You know, and that's the the hardest. Thing to get when you're especially on the product side of things is there's a lot of people out there with products a lot of people um, you know promoting each other and getting into that group can be difficult so just like we said it's never too early to start building an audience it's never too early to start trying to build relationships with those people that can help you when you do those things That's right. you know but you gotta really do it in a professional way like if I just was bugging him to try to promote my stuff, he probably would have been like, get away from me. But because <laughs> I was buying his products, right? Yep. And then I was earnestly trying to use them and do them. And I was communicating with him about that stuff. Like, you know, we were, I'm a valued, I'm a valued customer that he likes, right? Yep. So. And, and I'm sure you see this from the vendor side too, when people reach out to you with questions and stuff, not only is it helping them, but I would imagine that probably helps you too. Cause not only does it help you point out, you know, for the next time, this is where people are struggling. So I can kind of correct that in my next product or, and it also kind of helps you just <clears throat> kind of like when you teach, you get better at something. So yeah. when, when you teach somebody, you kind of teach yourself along the way. So, so yeah, no, that's absolutely true. It's a win win for them and for, and for me, you know, and you, and you really do build relationships with those people because yep. you're like, wow, like they're, and it makes you feel, you know, it makes you feel good as somebody who creates a product because so many people buy your product and don't do anything. You <laughs> right. know, so whenever somebody's like, Hey, I went out and did this and I got a client, you're like, Oh my God, thank you. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, that's awesome. Yep, <laughs> it like, actually helped a real person. <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, and you know, and of course, you can use them as testimonials and yep. all. Like you start building again. It's I was just we just did a live training earlier this morning with our private coaching group and like our monthly membership group, and I was talking about Dan Kennedy and about you know his thing, how he's always harping on it's about building relationships, not transactions. Yep, you know, and so many businesses right now that especially with what's going on currently that, that weren't building relationships and only doing transactions are in real trouble. You know? And so I think we just got to, it's a good time to remember that that's what, really what this is about. Like, and it's really hard. You think like you hear that and intellectually you totally get it. But when you're trying to make money, it's really hard to make your actions fit that belief. Right. Because you're just concerned about the money. Like you need the money or you like, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all about building relationships, but man, I got to get paid. Yep. Like, like, like how am I going to get paid in this deal? You know? And, uh, yeah, so it's, and that's, you know, it's a constant battle. Yeah. And that's one of the things I learned from Matt is, you know, <clears throat> design, you know, figure out who your perfect customer is put it on like a sheet printout thing, set it next to your computer and everything you do, do for that person. <laughs> because yeah. if you're it's just like sitting there writing to day. everybody and trying to make money, then number one, everybody's going to see through you as though uh, this guy's just trying to make a buck and probably they're going to assume you're scamming them. <laughs> Whether you are or not, you might have the best yeah. intentions, but it's not going to come across that way if you're looking just to make money. So if you've got your perfect customer, not only does it help you avoid looking like you're just trying to make money, but it also helps you properly connect with what they need if you're actually studying who they are and, and reaching out towards things they're interested in when you email them your offers. Yeah, if you're if you're an if you're an affiliate marketer, like you need to be in love with your 
audience, right? And I mean, like, you need to generally be concerned for them and their well-being, and 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 just like just like product producers, you know, a product producer wants to know what his you know what his market, what his audience can use, what they need, what will give them success. Like, you need to to be have that same kind of research. I think when you're just doing the affiliate side of things, like you need to know what keeps that guy up or, or woman up at night. You know, what are they thinking about? Like, what are their biggest problems? What, what are their goals? What are their dreams? And when you, when you start to get a handle on those kinds of things, it, it, it drastically alters the way that you talk to those people and they can't help but see that you're genuinely concerned right now like yes you want to make money but you know you you should you you don't want to be putting it across that that's the primary goal right like your primary there to them your primary goal should be look you you're interested in this thing i know you're interested in it and so you don't have to go out and try to figure out what's good to buy i figure it out for you and i'll just tell you like this is a good thing to buy right yep but if you're going to if you're going to do that, those people will listen to you and they'll buy the things you send. But if you're going to do that, the thing you're telling them about better be a good thing to buy. Yep. Yeah. Like, and I think I put this in, <clears throat> might've been that article you read. It might've been a different one, but Henry Ford put it this way. He said, if I had asked people what they wanted, they would have said faster horses. <laughs> so obviously yeah. he didn't try to figure out how to make faster horses. He knew something people needed they didn't even know they needed it yet because they it hadn't been even been invented, but but he knew if he asked them they just wanted faster horses they just wanted a better version of what they already had, but he knew he could create something so much better than what they had and that they would actually use it and need it, and I, and and, <clears throat> and I think that kind of pushes to the point you were getting at. Yeah, it does. If you if you understand your ideal person and you understand what the people on your list are trying to do what they're trying to get out of life what they're looking for and then you 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 only tell them about products that that help them get those goals and products that you've that you've done your research on right like not something that you just looked at a page and said oh this pays 50 bucks i'll promote that like you've actually requested access looked at it like, does this even seem like something somebody could do? Like, you you kind of verified the quality of it, and then sent that to them. They'll love you forever. Like, you become a you become a trusted source. Yeah, you become right? a lifetime even customer. They, <laughs> yeah, well, you well they become a lifetime customer of yours because you're yeah helping them out, right? Like, yeah. you're giving them good quality information, and that's that's really what people are looking for. They're looking for some guidance, so you know, don't take that lightly. Yeah, good stuff. Well, I've, we've been going for over thirty minutes already, so <laughs> I won't. I won't take too much more of you, Tom. I know you've got a podcast you're releasing. Uh, is it tomorrow? Yeah, so March twenty fourth. So depending on what time you hear this, may already be out, but it's called. Yeah, yeah this this will probably be out after that, but 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 it'll still be a okay. podcast live. So. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, it'll be. It'll be up there. It's on Apple, iTunes, Spotify, all the all the major ones. It's called "What's the Secret?" The um, the what the uh, what what the gurus won't tell you about making seven figures online. Took me a minute to remember that. So <laughs> it's called "What's the Secret?" What the gurus won't tell you about making seven figures online, and it's really just about what I talk about in that podcast. Is a lot of the things we discussed here, just a little more in depth, you know. I'm just an ordinary guy. I got a wife. I got two kids. The restaurant manager, Nick, my business partner in Offline Sharks, he was an auto tech. Like, we're just ordinary guys, and we've been able to to build a pretty amazing business in a relatively short amount of time. And so the podcast was really just a way for me to share that. And then from time to time, I'll bring on, you know, friends and some people to share their uh, insights on stuff. But mainly... For now, it's me talking about the things I've learned along the way. And, you know, because I was pretty surprised as I started to do this that it really wasn't quite the way most of the gurus made it out to be. Mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> and so, um, you know, if you're, you know, if you're somebody who 
is uh, looking for that, you know, piece of software, magic button where you can just do nothing and people pay you, you probably will not find anything of interest on my podcast. <laughs> but if, you know, if you realize that like, hey, this is a, a real business and it's going to take some effort, it's going to take some, some uh, you know, some some things for me to get this thing working, like, I don't really hold anything back. I share a lot of the inside stuff that, that can help you along the way. So, yeah, I'd love for anybody to check it out. Yep, that's really cool. So, it's basically, it's your podcast is essentially going to be a Warrior Plus special given away for free on every single week or however often <laughs> you do them. So, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, yeah, I'm doing them in season. So, yeah, all the episodes, yeah, you know, all the episodes are free and just going to share that knowledge. I have no, you know, I have no, uh, I have no course on how to make money online or anything like that. Like I just want to, one of the things I really uh, believe is that if, if you're able to achieve any kind of success with anything, then I think it's really a responsibility of yours to turn around, reach back behind you and, and help pull others up that are wanting to go on that same journey. And this podcast is just, really a way for me to do that Amen. and you can actually yeah people can actually get more information at my website tomgaddis.com and i've got a blog on there with articles and stuff and things like that so it might yep. be another good thing to check out yeah that's t-o-m-g-a-d-d-i-s.com yep yep <laughs> so i want to thank tom from offline sharks you guys can find them uh is that, is that TomGaddis.com? Does that get to your – that doesn't get to your offline shark site, does it? No, no. If you want to check out what's that going on offline sharks, you can just head over to OfflineSharks.com, and you'll see, you know, we have a, all of that stuff is really um, related to, uh, you know, getting clients and doing that kind of thing, which, again, I think even if you're trying to make money online, it's a great way to generate some cash flow and, yeah, and, and uh, juice would, up some things while you're doing it. And I would add that <clears> – <throat> the offline sharks model right now there's so many people out there right now that need an online presence because of the current situation and don't have one so that would be a great yeah. place to kind of learn get your feet wet there and start looking into you got i think you got over fifty thousand students there is that correct we, we have a that's, lot we've got a crazy. pretty we've got a pretty <laughs> jumping facebook group and like a lot of a lot of smart people a lot of people a lot smarter than me in that group and yeah, it's just super, super fun to be a part of. So. Yep, yep, and and you can scroll down that page, and there's just testimonial after testimonial of of some pretty smart people on there that have some pretty awesome testimony just just using Tom's stuff and and Nick's stuff and just really cool stuff you got going on there. Um, yeah, awesome. Well, Tom, I guess that's all I got here. We thank you for being on. Just go find them at TomGaddis.com or if you're over at OfflineSharks.com and uh, look for his podcast. Um, what was it called? It's called What's the Secret? What's the Secret on, on any of your podcast apps? Yeah, yeah, any of your favorite podcast apps, you can find it there. So Yeah, awesome. Well, thanks so much for having me on. I had a lot of fun. Great, great, uh, great conversation and questions and insights. So really appreciate it. Awesome. Thanks, Tom. See you. Yep, thanks.